you gentlemen were in the meeting yesterday where they were talking about the name collision issue. Basically, bring us up to speed on that, Jeff. Where are we now on that issue? Sure. So the issue first surfaced uh, a couple years ago. It's been uh, looked at energetically now for about the last six months. ICANN has commissioned a couple studies to look into the frequency of collisions and to better understand the issue. The emergent strategy uh, has uh, involved a block list approach, which allows registries to go live, most registries to go live immediately uh, if they block a list of names that were queried uh, in the, uh, the DIDLE data, the DNS OARC data set. Uh, that's a temporary approach. Then my company has been engaged to, for the long-term approach or the permanent approach, uh, which is to more carefully research the issue, understand the consequences as well as the uh, different modalities of why these collisions are occurring, um, and to produce a report uh, that will give registries um, the, the path to full deployment, um, getting out of the block list approach, managing down the risk of, um, you know, of damage through these collisions. Mikey, you've followed this issue for some time. What's your reaction to what you heard yesterday? How did you feel? Well, yes, I have followed this issue for quite a while, and in fact, I'm one of the folks who sort of mobilized and alerted people to this issue. And for, for quite some time, we've been concerned that there are dramatic impact, possible dramatic impacts on businesses, connectivity providers, network operators. Uh, my concern was reaching the level of fearfulness. Uh, and so yesterday's meeting was really helpful for me because I started to see things that I really like. I like the projects that Jeff is working on, but some of the other projects as well that are being proposed by ICANN security staff. So uh, I found yesterday's meeting very helpful. Now, Mikey, moving forward, what would you like to see happen? Well, I'd like to lobby Jeff a little bit because he's in the project team and, and say that there are really two things that I'd love to see. One is that yesterday we heard about several different projects that are essentially being run in parallel with each other. I think it would be lovely if there could be a coordinated management approach to those projects, mm -hmm. partly because I think it would make them more effective, and partly because I think it plays into the second thing that I would love to see, which is the formation of a community-based group that represents some of the folks who, who may be impacted on this, so that we, not no power, no authority, but we could provide guidance on a very short turnaround time and then uh, give you direction and, and the rest of the project team members direction mm -hmm. that, that can keep you on course. Those are the two things. And, and Jeff, Mikey is one voice. After, after the, uh, the panel, what came at you from other voices? Are people generally acknowledging the fact that this issue is now being addressed and are the, are the challenges that came at you or the questions how we proceed forward or, or what were you hearing following the session? Yeah, so the, the general feedback that I've been getting is, you know, this is an important issue. It's a, you know, serious issue. And people are appreciative of um, the fact that it is getting serious attention, reasoned attention. And Mikey, to your point, um, you know, there's a lot going on um, on this project. So, you know, ICANN has several proactive, you know, outreach, you know, sorts of uh, efforts. Um, there's our project. Um, there's the temporary approach. Uh, there's the implementation you know, of the, uh, the per registry uh, plans later next year. So um, I'm with you. I think that, you know, good community visibility, good coordination, um, so that people are aware of all the things that are going on, uh, the, the comprehensiveness of the approach, and people are aware uh, and, and, uh, and, and feel like there's good visibility into this issue. It sounds like you're both sinking on one thing, which is it's all about basically what happened yesterday. It's about open lines of communication, you being able to express your concerns and moving forward with this cooperative sort of approach of here's how we do. We, we, we need to talk and work this out. Yeah, I think that one of the things that's going on that I find really positive is taking the message, and it's not even a message thing, it's taking the attention away from the dire possible outcomes, which we need to understand better, and that's mm -hmm. what your study's gonna help us with, mm -hmm. which is great. But in a way, there's no way that we can ever know and we need to focus on what we can do. And what we can do can very substantially help uh, network operators, ISPs, business owners, people address the possible collisions that will occur quickly, uh, effectively, without undue disruption to their 
their systems and lives. Less of a sky is falling sort of, of uh, concern and more of a what's the risk, how do we deal with it, how do we move forward? So it's not unlike any other risk management uh, approach. So you manage down the risk uh, to an acceptable level, right? Understand it, understand your consequences, frequencies, and then you invest the rest in response. So you know, you're never going to drive risk to zero in anything. Um, you need to have a, a comprehensive approach, and I think that, you know, the, that, that this program in its totality will do that. It struck me, sitting as merely an observer in yesterday's session, that this was the system working. This was everything coming together as it should. I think that's right. I think one of the things that's made it very hard this last year is the sort of innate tension between the need to get that new GTLD program out the door and the needs of folks who are impacted by that. And I find this refreshingly positive. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.